Hey, what's going on, everybody? Long Box Love Affair here. Last day of the convention, Baltimore Comic Con. We are on the show floor. Sean is wheeling and dealing. Uh, my friend Martin is hunting in the background. And uh, yeah, so um, we're tired, we're done. <laughs> I'm waiting for Art Adams to finish my sketch, which is not looking good. So there could be a very sad long box uh, going home tonight. So we'll see. But um, here's some images from the show floor, as I promised. And then we're gonna get into our haul video for the final days, a uh, day of Comic Baltimore Comic Con. So enjoy, see ya after the footage. All right, we are home. I am done comic conventioning. I don't know about you, I'm, I'm tired. I'm pretty beat, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're beat. Took the train back to DC. Sean is here until Tuesday. Uh, so we're hoping to hit up a comic book store tomorrow. Really? <laughs> uh, so if we do have a haul, we'll, we'll, we'll film that. But for the time being, this is day three of our Baltimore Comic Con haul. So news to report on the Arthur Adams front for me. Uh, as I mentioned, I had a sketch cover there for him to do uh, a sketch for me. I w got there day one, shortly after the doors opened. I thought I was maybe eighth or tenth in line, which might have been the case. But nonetheless, my sketch did not get finished. Uh, now, he takes his time. And obviously, there are people coming up to booths and asking for signatures and interrupting I mean, him. It, it's unfortunate. I'm, I'm bummed. I'm super bummed. I get it. Uh, it, that he can only do so much. So I'm, I'm not mad. I'm just bummed that I couldn't get that to, to come, come to fruition. I, he, he, I put all my eggs in one basket. So Art Adams was my sketch opportunity. I did go into the con with this list uh, of different people to think about reaching out to, including Gene Ha, who was booked up, uh, Jay Lee, who I ultimately decided not to reach out to, uh, and Philip Tan, who was more expensive than Art Adams, which I don't think is cool. So I I didn't schedule any other ones. So now I have money left in my pocket, which is okay. Hopefully there'll be another opportunity for Art Adams in the future. All right, so Sean, Quirty Comics, is going to give us his haul, and then I'll finish up with the books I found today. So what do you got? Well, I did want to first preface that, you know, the last day of the haul, I mean, the last day of the convention was like the time to try to get some good deals. And um, after talking to a bunch of the dealers, we realized that it's, it was kind of slow this year. It was um, a, the, the con was about two months earlier. Yeah, People forgot it was happening this early in the month. Uh, so yeah. And there was also a uh, football game today. So it was like this combination of a lot of people in Baltimore at the same time. So it could like, you know, drive people away. So with that in mind, uh, my strategy today was like, try to get everything for a deal. Like some of the shops already were doing like 50% off, just try to, to move stuff. And so um, I just tried to really grab what I could and see what they would like offer. But um, I got a pretty near mint copy of NYX and um, the real Ghostbusters, it's beat up newsstand. Um, that's not the price, um, but I got both of those for $10 total, which is- You got both of those for $10? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, I just was, it was like 10 each and I was like, we just do 10 for. <laughs> there are a couple times he was telling me what he was going to off offer and I said, they'll never take that. And they did. <laughs> they did. I was like, I'm just going low and just to see. And then I'll be like, no thanks. And they're like, hold on, let me see. Um, I did score um, two copies of Marvel Comics Presents number five, um, the, the variant. Uh, and Rob, it's, Liefeld Rob, yeah, Rob Liefeld variant. Rob Liefeld. 
for two bucks each. And this is the cameo of Rain, which is Wolverine's daughter. Um, and then I got the second appearance of Cloak and Dagger, which is Peter Parker, 69. Psychedelic cover. Yeah. Again, it's, it's you know, putting their names on the building and stuff. So really nice. Um, I really like the design and structure of this. Um, mm -hmm. I think I got that for like eight bucks. Um, and then at the same booth, I picked up the first appearance of Cersei from the Eternals. Uh, so now I have the full run of the first Eternals that I just scored for pretty cheap at the con because it's not a hot book now. Super so. hot. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, at the same booth, I got the $2 books. I saw a beat up copy of Uncanny X-Men 268, but I was like, oh, it's a newsstand. Let me check the inside. It's a Mark Jewelers. So I guess. Actually. <laughs> I was so, mad. <laughs> so this was uh what was it, like six bucks? Yeah. And it's it's B, it's fine. But, but it's a Mark like, Jewelers. Mark Jewelers, you gotta snag it. Um grabbed a you know medium low copy of Giant Size Fantastic Four number four, which is first appearance of multiple man. 20 bucks. Um, I got a really great deal from um, Bonafide Comics that was at the con um, for X-Men 54. Uh, he gave me a great deal. It's the first appearance of Scott Summers, uh, sorry, Alex Summers, um, who later becomes Havoc, for those who don't know. Um, it does have a little, like, it looks like some burn or residue marks on it, but it, it's definitely better than the one that I have at home. And that's not Neil Adams yet? It uh, might be. Don't, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, but check out uh, Bonafide Comics at bonafidecomicstore.com. Yeah. So check it out. Um, and then... I uh, snagged a Ultimate Comics all-new Spider-Man number two, which is the third appearance of Miles Morales. So, nice copy. Yeah, it was a pretty good copy. Not I bad. debated buying one, but I, I, I didn't. I probably should have. And then um, <clears throat> literally in the last, like, was hour of the con, this one store was, like, just trying to get rid of everything. And so I grabbed... Um, Uncanny X-Men 137, a pretty decent, I think it might be a 9 or better, potentially after pressing. And then um, Power Man Iron Fist 84, which is the second Sabretooth, but the fourth appearance of Sabretooth. Second cover, um, second cover of Sabretooth, but then the fourth. Appearance. So complicated. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but 40 bucks for both of those. And then... Um, the third appearance of Sabretooth, which is Power Man Iron Fist 78. So I got all the Sabretooths in a pretty decent condition and no more buying of those. <laughs> and done. We like we, done. we called it a day. We wanted to get the train back <laughs> before the game let out. And frankly, we're exhausted. If you've watched these videos in sequence from day one to day two to now day three, you've probably seen our energy <laughs> plummeting and con you know, fatigue yeah, is, is, is setting in so uh it's it's almost dinner time so we're gonna <laughs> figure that out after this filming so my my haul is uh equally as small although you got a little bit more uh the first book i found was one i saw around the con floor from anywhere between 35 to 150 dollars which is crazy detective comics 410 it is a Really cool Neil Adams pink cover. Uh, it, it, I saw varying conditions for much more money. This was labeled as twenty five dollars. I offered twenty. I got I pay, I got paid. I paid twenty dollars for this. So really cool comic. Uh, it adds to the stack of Neil Adams I picked up uh, for Detective and Batman comics, which I really was focusing on this con and had great success. The rest of these, or actually, I'll show one more Neil Adams, which was actually my final purchase of the day. Uh, I bought the Brave and the Bold 85. It's Batman and Green Arrow. I believe this is the first new Green Arrow costume. So I was doing a little research before the con. I saw this book. I was like, that's a cool cover. And I happened to find it in a $10 bin. So it is tan. Uh, and I almost didn't get it because of that. But at the end of the day, it's in great condition. Minus the slight tanning of the cover all around. So really cool one to pick up for 10 bucks. 
So last but not least is nine books that I picked up from the table that we first went to when we entered the con on Friday. So we went back, uh, everything was uh, discounted heavily, 50% off the back issues, and then they had a, 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 a whole table full of variant covers. You had some of them that you've already showed, and they, they weren't all variants. There were some very uh, regular covers as well, or cover Bs. So case in point, Marvel Fanfare 11. All the variants were $2. All the, all the books in those variant bins were $2. This is not a variant, but it is a killer George Perez cover. This was $2. It's minty. It's really nice. I used to have them, and I was sad to sell this particular issue. So I, I just love the craziness of this cover. It's very busy. Also, I've never seen this book before, but it is an incentive variant. It's Deadpool number one, the Chris Bacallo variant cover. I collect Chris Bacallo variants, the ones that I like, uh, and this is one that really caught my eye when I was hunting through the bins. Uh, they had doubles of different books, but they only had one of this one, so I snagged it. It got some really great action. This would be a cool one to get signed one day. Also, another book that I had hunted years ago and just stopped because I didn't want to pay the ratio price is Cable Number 1, the Nick Bradshaw variant. So it just shows that if you wait long enough, you could find a book for $2, and that's what happened here. Uh, I, I've seen this book anywhere between $14 and $25, so I picked it up for 2 Similar to Sean, I picked up this Marvel Comic Presents 5. He threw me a bone and threw me one of them. So I was like, okay, I will take this Liefeld incentive variant. Uh, it's not my favorite Liefeld cover, I'll be honest, but uh, I, I, I do appreciate when he draws something he doesn't usually draw, which is Wolverine and Venom. Another of uh, uh, various printings, it's uh, the fourth print of Doctor Doom. It's, or, I'm sorry, the second print of Doctor Doom 4. Uh, really ominous MODOK cover. Frankly, this is how MODOK should be drawn and portrayed, not as the silly, creepy, clay-like guy. Although I like the Claymation <laughs> uh, series, I did not like him in Ant-Man Quantumania. So, second printing of MODOK. I've seen some dealers have this for a little bit higher price. So, for $2, less than cover price. I mean, it's a $4 cover price. So, we got this half off. Another book that I don't have, but I have some of the other second printing, is, is Guardians of the Galaxy number one. This is interior artwork. This is the second print of issue number one from the Donny Cates run. Uh, I have two, three, four, and five second printings, I think. This is one that I don't have. It doesn't fetch a lot of money, but I wasn't going to go about and buy it on eBay and, and pay shipping and all that. So to find it for $2, yes. Another one I didn't have in my collection, and it seems weird to like show it in isolation, is FF number three, the second printing. <clears throat> number two has the beginning of the phrase. And number four has the end of the phrase, and it says, welcome to the future. And so you just have confute here. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I think they're a little bit harder to find, these books, and I do appreciate Fantastic Four. I really like the FF run. So I went back and picked up these lower print second printings. We're going to rub it in here. Art Adams did this very cover. Uh, Fantastic Four, number one. The Thing, this was a ratio, 1 in 25, for $2. Uh, this was originally sold for $25 when it first uh, debuted. And, you know, it's cooled down a lot. It, I don't think it was ever really hot, but it is a cool action shot for Art Adams. I do love his artwork. The price tag on the back is $15. So I didn't get it for $15. I got it for $2. And I was thinking, hey, if he does my sketch, maybe I'll have him sign this. He didn't do my sketch. I didn't have him sign it. And last but not least, uh, Spider-Man Deadpool number two, the fifth printing. I pick these up whenever I, uh, or I should say I pick up the various printings of the early issues of Deadpool Spider-Man uh, because they're typically lower print and they, people weren't collecting them as much. So this is a very different cover. I don't think it's interior artwork, but it, well, it might be. Uh, but it's Ed McGinnis artwork, fifth printing, bound to be low print, so snagged it for two bucks. There's very little margin for error there. Mm. So that's my haul. That's your haul. Baltimore's done. Yeah. <laughs> Baltimore done. is done. And I mean, overall, great experience. Um, 
a lot of high prices, a, a, a lot of crazy prices, but you expect that from a comic book convention. But it's interesting to see some of the pricing be way out of whack with eBay, with um, any sort of a GPA analysis. Uh, I mean, it, it, I think you were looking at a book that was two to three hundred dollars more at the convention than it was to buy it outright online for the same grade. No, for a better grade. A better grade. Yeah. So I think, I think you know, we did pretty decent thinking about what we wanted to buy and then what we wanted to spend on. So, you know, it, it might have paid a little bit, a little bit more here and there, but I think for the most part, we didn't, it wasn't as drastic as yeah. last year. We weren't dropping bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think as a as a buyer, you need to do your homework and know what to expect and to uh, you know, have a, a, range, a price range in mind for a certain book because uh, then you don't want to get be caught unawares when you're we're shopping around. Um, you know, and that, that's, that's not to say everybody was that way. There are definitely great dealers at the convention. At, I mean, this is any comic book convention this happens. So it's not just this con uh, that you just need to uh, be aware of what you want and what you're willing to pay and, and make that move. And also think about, you know, doing the hunt. So going booth to booth. And there were some dealers there that had great market price books and you could see the people flocking there and buying everything and getting great deals and then there there were the ones that had exponentially high you know books that were just sitting on the wall so um yeah do your homework that's interesting though like <laughs> survey the room i do yes. that at the local cons yeah. I, I was like who has the busiest booth right now and I try to weasel my way into those long boxes and check out why are people excited there and that is uh a good strategy yeah I mean, because there's there are people there for a reason and if you're don't have anybody at your booth maybe it's early in the con or maybe there's something else going on maybe your prices are a l little high so um but yeah super fun convention great to connect with a lot of people in the community a lot of dealers i've, I've worked with over the past um and just a lot of youtubers and instagrammers and and uh like i said in my video yesterday the the guy the guys at bronze and modern gods plugging them again you know being on their show was awesome so really just a fun experience yes. so thanks yep. thanks for watching if you've watched all three videos you know big thumbs up to you thank you thank you thank you make sure you subscribe to myself Make sure you subscribe to QWERTY Comics. Links are in the video description. They are in the title for his account. You're here for my account because this is my channel. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, looking forward to sharing more comic hauls uh, and um, you know, staying connected. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.